good people and you meet some, some real scumbags. And you in Arizona are absolutely, you have some of the best people representing the I want, to, I want to shout out one of the very best, and that's Representative Paul Gosar. Where's Paul at? Thank you, Paul, for being a good guy. I want to call out the chair of the Arizona Republican Party, Gina. Where is Gina? Here we go, Gina. We've got Penal County Sheriff Mark Lamb. Where's Mark? Mark? And we've got Karen Taylor. Where's Karen? Thank you, Karen. We've also got Debbie Wise here. Where's Debbie at? Debbie, thank you. Again, some great leaders here in Arizona. And this campaign, my friends, is about a very simple thing. It's about taking this country leadership. San Francisco liberal Kamala Harris and promote Donald Trump to President of the United States. Now, we're, we're here, and, and I want to talk a little bit about the border, my friends, because you guys, the American southern border is a disaster. And then we're going to talk to the American media afterwards. So we'll take some questions from the press because whether they're hostile or friendly, if you want to be the people's president or vice president, you ought to talk to the press. You ought to make your case to the American people and not run from them. And I'm sure because President Trump and I are the only candidates in this race who will actually talk to the press that they'll only ask us friendly and nice questions, right? Don't, don't hold your breath. And by the way, it's good to be here in, in Arizona. Even in early September, I will tell you, though, we, we brought the whole crew to Arizona. I've got my lovely wife, Usha. Usha, where'd they, where'd they put you? But we, we, we brought our three kids. They're seven, four, and two, and we even brought our dog. And I'll tell you, after about, after about 15 minutes, this morning in the Arizona heat, they were all tapped out. You guys are a lot tougher in Arizona than we are in the state of Ohio. I have, I have never seen three kids who were anxious to get out of a hotel room wilt in 15 minutes. They were ready for the AC after about 15 minutes. And, and uh, we're so thrilled with the welcome that you guys have given them. And we're so thrilled with what this state could be with better leadership at the federal level. I mean, think about this, y'all. So <laughs> Kamala Harris is an interesting is an interesting candidate. Yeah, we should we should boo her because she deserves it. I will stop you from doing that. But think about this. This is a this is a person who became the vice president of the United States on a promise of open borders, and she actually delivered. On day one, Kamala Harris said, we're going to suspend deportations. On day one, Kamala Harris said, we're going to stop Donald Trump's remain in Mexico p policy. And, and remember, what that does is, if you come into this country and you claim asylum, you got to wait in Mexico while your claim is being adjudicated. We're not going to release you into the country, give you a work perm permit and health care benefits. you got to remain in Mexico. She stopped that policy on day one. And then also on day one, she re-implemented the terrible catch and release policy that allows people to take advantage of our system. She stopped the border wall. You go to the border wall, of course, all across the state of Arizona, you see it sitting there on the ground. And she did this crazy thing where they did parole for millions upon millions of illegal aliens. That is the record of Kamala Harris. Well, I bring a message from Donald J. Trump. If you are in this country illegally in six months, pack your bags because you're going home. Now the 
and, and here's, here's what we're going to do on top of it. We are going to re-implement deportations in this country. We are going, we're going to finish that beautiful border wall along the state of Arizona and everywhere else. We are going to stop catch and release, and we're going to stop giving Medicare benefits and health care benefits to illegal aliens. They deserve to go to American citizens, not to people who have no right. To now, that's, that is the Donald Trump agenda, and it's simple common sense. And it's one Donald Trump has gotten endorsements from a you know, we've got on the Trump team, we've got people like Nikki Haley and Brian Kemp, and we've also got RFK and Tulsi Gabbard. You know why? <laughs> Common sense. Common sense is what unites the Republican ticket in 2024. You don't have to agree with me or Donald Trump on every single issue, but you know we are united in some basic common sense. We're going to close down that citizens. We're going to try to persuade our fellow Americans instead of censoring them, and we're going to fire that crazy person, Kamala Harris. We're not going to give her a promotion. That's the common sense, unity view of the United States of America. Now let's just talk about some of the wages, some of the costs of Kamala Harris's policies. I believe just last month we had the largest fentanyl uh, bust in the history of this country, $12.6 million of fentanyl. And let, let's talk just a little bit about the human cost of this, because this is not just, this is, these are not just statistics. $12.6 million, that's a lot of money, of course, and that's a lot of fentanyl. But let, let me tell you just a personal story. You, you know, a, a lot of you know where I came from and, and how I grew up, but some of you don't. I was raised by my grandmother, a, a working class Appalachian woman from Eastern Kentucky. She was, she was a spitfire. God bless you guys. Thank you. Now, Mamaw was, was an interesting study in contrast. You know, Mamaw, uh, she was a woman of very deep Christian faith, and she was. Even though she didn't graduate from high school, she thought very seriously about what her, her Christian faith required of her. Mamaw also loved the F word, my friend. She was a, she, and, and, and I'll tell you, my, my wife will attest to this. She gets mad at me from time to time because, you know, sometimes I talk like Mamaw, and that means sometimes our four-year-old talks like Mamaw, and nobody wants a four-year-old who talks like Mamaw. Um, I won't even repeat some of the things that she said. I know we've got cameras here and we've got some kids too, but you know, Ma Mamaw, because she was tough, but because she was loving, and because she was firm and disciplined, but also because she gave me a home when I needed one, I, I was able to live the American dream. And I think the American dream is worth fighting for and worth preserving for, isn't it? But, you know, the, the reason Mamaw took such good care of me, the reason she had to take such good care of me is because my mom struggled with, fit, with, with opioid abuse for a big chunk of my early life. And I, I'm very proud to say, by the way, that my mom is now right on the cusp of 10 years clean and sober, and we're grateful to God for that. And, and for all of you who have a loved one struggling with addiction, there is hope on the other side of addiction. There is hope in recovery, and there is grace out there, but only if we make our streets safe enough to give people second chances. Because one of the things that I, I really do believe is that if the poison that Kamala Harris has invited into this country in 2024, if it was coming across when my mom was still struggling with addiction, I don't think I would have gotten that second chance with my mom. I don't think that she'd be on the cusp of 10 years clean and sober, and I don't think our three kids would have gotten to build a great relationship with, with my mom and their grandmother. And if we believe in anything in this country, in the America First movement, we believe in second chances, and Kamala Harris has taken it away from our citizens. We're going to fight to rebuild it. We're going to fight to rebuild the American dream. And that is why we've got to close down that southern border. 
You know, I was in Valdosta, Georgia, about, about as far away from here as you could be, and, and the weather's a little bit more temperate in Valdosta, Georgia, even in August. But, you know, they showed me something. The sheriff showed me their interdiction room. And that's where they, all the drugs that they catch on I-10 or on I-75, it sort of sits at the intersection of two, two major highways. And they showed me the stuff that they, they, they got. And, you know, there's big bags of marijuana. There's cocaine, there's pills, there's a whole host of things they showed me. And you know what they showed me? I was confused by it. They showed me a big box of candy. And, you know, it's like nerds candy, which I think to myself, well, I don't like nerds very much. I, I'm more of a chocolate guy, but it doesn't belong in the sheriff's interdiction room. And you know why it's there? Because the drug cartels have figured out that if they disguise this stuff as candy, it's easier to get it into this country. And by the way, what's sick people? What's sick people who use children's candy as a disguise for deadly drugs? And what a sick person we have as vice president who invites these people into our country to do business instead of throwing them out. But But you know, it, it's, it, it, it makes me realize that you've got kids who are going to get into a packet of candy on a playground or in their school, and it's going to take their lives. And the reason it's going to take their lives is not because any kid should suffer for picking up a bag of candy, but because their leadership, our children's leadership, has failed them. What kind of a person lets drug cartels do business in their country? What kind of a person allows the drug cartels to disguise fentanyl as candy? And what kind of a person invites these people to get rich off of our country while our own citizens die? I don't want to answer that question, what kind of a person, but she sure as hell shouldn't be president of the United States, which is why we need to say, you are fired. Kamala Harris is fired. Now, it's interesting, though, because, you know, the, the media loves to cover that Kamala Harris is, is running a campaign on joy. They say this all the time. Have you heard this? <laughs> the Democratic National Convention was all about joy. And I thought to myself, well, you know, what, what does Kamala Harris have to be especially joyful about? She's been the vice president for three and a half years. Americans can't afford groceries. Americans can't afford to buy a home, especially young families. Sixty-five percent of young Americans are not going to be able to buy a home because of Kamala Harris's policies. We talked about the fentanyl coming into our country. Now, what Kamala Harris is joyful about is that she got promoted to the presidential nomination without earning a single vote. But you know what? I'd like, I'd like a president or a vice president who's joyful because they did a good job for the American people. And that is Donald Trump, by the way. Because it, it, as, as much as the media loves to lie about him, Donald Trump has got the best sense of humor, and he's having a lot of fun out there on the campaign trail, right? We all, we all know it, we see it, we watch it every day, but here's the thing. You know why President Trump is excited and happy about the future? It's not that he got a promotion he didn't earn. He's excited about the future because he knows this is the greatest country in the world, and the only thing that's broken about it is our failed leadership. He's excited about delivering lower grocery prices for Americans. He's excited about closing down that southern border. He's excited about making our streets safe again. And he's excited because the people of Arizona are about to elect him President of the United States to make all of us better off, not just him, all of us together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to end catcher and release. We're going to close down that border. We're going to wage war against the American, or excuse me, against the Mexican drug cartels, not against the American citizens who are suffering because of those drug cartels. And we are going to make this country great again. Now, I, I, I want to offer one final, one final point here. Uh, Donald Trump gave a speech today, and it's the first time I've commented on it publicly, but I think it's one of the most interesting speeches I've ever heard an American president give. Because, you know, Kamala has this slogan. She talks about, you know, we're not going to go back. And I always ask myself, Kamala, what are you talking about? We're not going back to what? To low inflation? Rising take-home pay? We're not going back to a secure southern border? I'd like to go back to all those things because the American people were doing a lot better.
But I, re I realize, my friends, that when she says we're not going back, we, we are going back to a very ancient and dark time in human history. We're going back. Kamala Harris wants to send us back to a place where you have to be rich to enjoy public safety, where you have to be wealthy to afford to buy a home in this country, where if you want to have a nice steak on a Friday night, you've got to make a lot of money. I happen to believe that middle-class Americans ought to be able to afford a nice steak on a Friday night. Isn't that just simple? So, you know, Kamala Harris wants to take us back to a point where the country and the world don't actually work unless you've got connections and unless you've got a lot of money. But the promise of this country, the promise of liberty and justice for all, is that whether you're rich or poor, you get to live in a safe community. Whether you're rich or poor, you get to afford a nice meal for your family. Whether you're rich or poor, you live in a country where your leaders protect the border instead of tearing it down. Kamala Harris wants to take us back to a time when America didn't even exist because in America, every citizen controls his own destiny, every woman controls her own future. Kamala Harris wants to take us back to a broken time in world history. Donald Trump wants to rebuild the American promise where everybody, we all believe in liberty and justice for all, and every single citizen gets access to it. That's what Donald Trump's trying to bring us back to. And, and you know, he, he said something at this speech that I, I, I just never heard anything like it from a person who wants to be President of the United States. Because for 30 years, there has been a broken consistency in this country that we don't need to make our own stuff. We don't need to employ our own workers. We'd rather buy energy from tin pot dictators in the Middle East than from our own workers and from our own territory. And Donald Trump just ripped all that up today. And he said something that I think is going to live on in this country. It's going, to, it's going to dominate this country's policy for the next generation. He said that we want to reward American workers. We want to cut taxes on American workers and penalize companies that are shipping jobs overseas. Think about that. Because what Kamala Harris has been doing and what our broken leaders have been doing for a generation, not just her, but for 30 years, has been exactly the opposite. They've been raising taxes on American citizens to give health care benefits to illegal aliens and people who shouldn't be here. They've been raising your taxes and sending it overseas to Chinese companies that are building electric vehicles. And Donald Trump says that is bogus. That is garbage. We're not doing it anymore. So if America first means anything, it means we're prioritizing the American worker, we're prioritizing the American citizen, and we are rebuilding a country where wherever you came from, whatever your background is, whoever your parents were, liberty and justice for all, not just for the well-connected and not just for Kamala Harris's donors. God bless you all. Thank you for having me. Let's make this country great again. Donald Trump's going to do it. We just got to get him across the finish line. Now, this is, uh, this is for the less friendly part of our festivities here. We're going to take some questions from the media. And let me, let me just say this. What I would like to do is start out with local reporters. We'll take a few questions from the local folks. And then if we have time afterwards, we'll take some questions from the national, the national pool as well. So if you're a local Arizona reporter, let's start with you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm Rachel Alexander with the Arizona Sun-Times, and I also used to work as the Maricopa County elections attorney uh, when it was under some better leadership. And my question for you is, I know that we've got people going to the polls as observers en masse, and we've got Republican attorneys en masse um, to stop any possible election fraud. Is there anything else that you know of that is being done? Well, actually, yes. Um, and, and not just in Arizona, by the way, but all across the country. The Republican National Committee has filed over 100 lawsuits for the basic principle. The basic principle that we want every legal vote to count and we want every illegal vote to be thrown out. It's very simple. If you shouldn't be voting in our elections, you should not have your, your ballots counted. 
If you should be voting in our elections, we should make it easier for you to vote and not harder. And unfortunately, the Democrats seem to want to turn this on their head. We've got a bill right now in the U.S. Congress, the SAVE Act, that would make it so that only legal American citizens can vote in our elections. And And, and the Democrats are fighting it, and it occurred to me that there is a logic to what the Democrats are trying to do. It's disgusting, but there's a logic to it. They want illegal aliens to steal everybody's job, and now they want illegal aliens to steal everybody's vote. And if the Democrats have their way, American citizens aren't going to have a stake in the future of this country. We're not going to allow it. President Trump and I are going to fight for people who deserve to be here and have the right to be here. But here, here's what I know that we're doing in Arizona. I know that we're doing a lot to try to get poll workers to the polls and poll watchers to the polls. And all of you, if you're able to volunteer, please go out and do it. Because we know that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And if we've got people there observing what's going on, that's the best way to secure elections in Arizona. The other thing that I know the other thing I know the Republican Party is working hard on is making sure that you don't have a bunch of broken machines on the day of the election. How, wouldn't that be nice to have the machines? Wouldn't it be nice to have the machines actually work on election day? We're going to do everything that we can to make sure that happens. But if you see something, go, go out and say something. Talk to your local Republican Party officials. Talk to the RNC. Send a note to me and to the campaign. We want to make sure that every legal ballot counts in this country. And if you're seeing something that's broken, let us know because we want to fight for that. Next question. Hi, Alan Overstoll's KTR News. Uh, why do you think that polls so sh show such a close race between your campaign and the Harris Walls campaign, even with high frustration regarding the border? Thank you. You know, I don't put much stock in polls. The only poll that really matters to me is the one on Election Day. And, you know, and I, I was actually talking to President Trump just before I, I, I came out here, and you know, he reminded me, remember, when he won the presidency back in 2016, one of the closest states was Wisconsin, and there were polls out there that said he was going to lose Wisconsin by 17 points, okay? And he won Wisconsin. So I think a lot of times the polls are out there. The, most people aren't talking to the polls. And look, right now, we're at a stage in the campaign where there are a lot of good polls for the Trump campaign. Ignore them. Well, if you see a, a bad poll for the Trump campaign, ignore them. The good polls, the bad polls, who cares? Let's get out there and work our hind ends off and let's win this race. So, Den Dennis Welch, CBS 5 News. Um, recently, John McCain's son endorsed the other side on the other campaign over there. I wanted to get your take. Well, look, I, 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 look, I, I do have a question. I recently read that uh, in a college newspaper, please. you were quoted as praising John McCain. So it's kind of a two-part. Get your thoughts on McCain's son endorsing the other team. And what do you think about John McCain and his legacy? Because as you know, Donald Trump and McCain's legacy is complicated at best. <laughs> well, look, one of, the, one of the things I love about Donald Trump, and I never knew John McCain, but I suspect that one of the things that I would have loved about John McCain is that they didn't let their personal grievances get in the way of serving the country. Okay, so John McCain, I'm sure, disagreed with Donald Trump on a whole host of issues. And yes, Donald Trump disagreed with John McCain on a whole host of issues. I do not believe for a second that if John McCain were alive today and he sees what's going on at the American southern border, that he would support Kamala Harris and all the destruction that she's wrought. I really don't believe that. Now, look, I, I, I think, I mean, look, <laughs> who cares what somebody's family thinks about a presidential race? I care about what these people care about the presidential race. I, I, I really couldn't. I mean, look, jo John McCain has been, you know, what, what, John McCain died, what, what, five, six, seven years ago? And the media is turning into a story what John McCain's family says about Donald Trump. I don't know if anybody noticed, but pretty much every single mem member of Tim Walz's family came out and endorsed Donald Trump. Is that a bigger story than what John McCain's son said? I think so. So, sir, whatever John McCain's family thinks, whatever John McCain would have ultimately thought about Kamala Harris's policies, my goal here is to persuade every single person in this room and every single person in the state of Arizona that their lives will be better if they elect Donald J. Trump. I believe that in my heart, and I'm going to keep on fighting for that basic idea.
Next question. Hi, Senator. Uh, Stephanie Murray with the Arizona Republic. My question is, what should... <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm sure she's one of the good ones, right? Uh, my question is, what should Arizonans expect to hear from Trump and Harris in the debate next week? Well, I think that what you're going to hear from Kamala Harris is that despite all evidence to the contrary, she agrees with Donald Trump on everything now. I, I, yeah, we, 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 we have to remember, she's on video saying she wanted to defund the police, and now she says, well, she didn't mean it. She's on video saying that she wanted to open the southern border. Now she says she didn't mean it. She's on video saying she wanted to uh, end fracking in this country. Now she says she doesn't believe it. She casts the deciding vote on the Inflation Explosion Act that made houses and groceries unaffordable, and now she says that she wants to lower prices for American citizens. Kamala Harris, if you want to do all these things, you ought to drop out and endorse Donald J. Trump because he's already done them. It's that simple. I joked with the president a few days ago, and I said, sir, I think I figured it out. I think I figured out why Kamala Harris is running from every single position that she once held. It's because she realizes that, sh that we're going to win and she wants my job. She must really like living in the Naval Observatory, and now she wants Trump to switch me out for Kamala Harris. I don't think that he's going to do that, by the way. But look, I, I really hope. I really hope that Kamala Harris actually just answers some questions about why she allegedly is running away from every single position that she had. And most importantly, if she wants to close down the border and she wants to lower the cost of energy and she wants to make housing more affordable, why doesn't she do it now? She's the vice president today. She doesn't need... It, it's, it's so funny to hear Democrat politicians talk about Donald Trump and they say, well, we want to close the border. Well, Donald Trump already did it. Well, we want to lower, we want to get inflation below 2%. Well, Donald Trump already did it. Well, we want rising take-home pay for the middle class. Donald Trump already did it. These guys, I hope with the debate that Kamala Harris answers for her record because I sure as hell know Donald Trump will proudly answer for his because it's a record that we can all be proud of. And I, I have to say one, one more thing on Kamala Harris. You know, they agreed to this debate, they, they agreed to this debate months ago. And over the last few weeks, and I've seen this from the inside of the campaign, over the last few weeks, Kamala Harris has been trying to change the rules on the debate. Uh, she wants to change everything because she knows that unless she gets the rules that she wants, unless she has a bias set up, the American people are going to reject her. But you know, you know what she really wants to do? And look out for this on September the 10th. She really wants a moment where she can interrupt Donald Trump and say, I'm speaking. Because, you know, Ka 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 Kamala Harris, sometimes I think she, she, do she doesn't want to be the vice president. She wants to be the vice principal. She really likes, she really likes to just tell people what to do. And she really wants that moment where she says, I'm speaking. Right? And that's exactly what you should watch for it on September the 10th. And then you can come back and say you heard it here first. That Kamala Harris, what, what, what I'd like her to actually do again is just explain her record because I think the American people deserve to have a president who explains their record and doesn't run from it. Next question. Hi, Senator Kit Maher, CNN. I wanted to ask in the way. Thank you. Now, Kit. I, I honestly, she's going to hate me saying this. Kit's one of the good ones, but she won't be able to go back to CNN after I just said that. So take it or leave it, Kit. Ask your question, please. Thanks, Senator, uh, for taking my question. I appreciate it. Um, in the wake of the Georgia school shooting yesterday, I wanted to ask you what specific policies do you support to end school shootings like this? And if you'll allow it a second one, specifically please. on the debate, 
Has Trump consulted you for any advice? Have you participated in the policy discussions that he has held with Tulsi Gabbard? And, and what advice have you offered him? Yeah, so just on the debate, I mean, look, the President and I talk every day, and, you know, we're, we're constantly talking about what are we seeing out there, what are people that we're talking to saying to us, because we do, unlike the Kamala Harris campaign, get out there and talk to people. We don't just stand in front of a teleprompter and try to talk at them. We, we often let them say things, too. And so we're, we're constantly trading ideas and, and, and trading, you know, war stories from the campaign trail about what we're hearing and what we're seeing. But no, I, I, you know, we're not going to have some formal debate prep session because Donald Trump doesn't need it. Donald Trump actually knows what he believes and he knows his record and that's all he really has to talk about. So, so, so whether it's with Tulsi or with RFK or with Nikki Haley or with anybody else, I think the president will keep on doing what he does, which is talk to people, hear what, hear what they're seeing. Uh, actually go out there and, and try to understand what they're seeing on the campaign trail and just try to incorporate that into a message that works for the American people. That's what he's done. That's what he'll continue to do. Now, on, on, on the first question, look, first of all, wh what happened in Georgia is just an awful tragedy. And I know we've got a lot of parents and a lot of grandparents in this room. I mean, I, I cannot imagine, you know, little kids so excited to go back to school. God love them. And they're at their first week back from the summer. And... It, an absolute barbarian decides to open fire and take their lives and also a couple teachers. We gotta, we gotta think about these people. If you're the praying type, and I know I am, we gotta hold them up in prayer. We gotta be, we gotta be hoping for the best for these, for this incredible community because no parent should have to deal with this. No child should have to deal with this. And yes, after holding these folks up in prayer and giving them our sympathies because that's what people deserve in a time of tragedy, then we have to think about how to make this less common. Now look, the Kamala Harris answer to this is to take law-abiding American citizens' guns away from them. That is what Kamala Harris wants to do. But we have to ask ourselves, we actually have, have been able to run an experiment on this because you've got some states with very strict gun laws, and you've got some states that don't have strict gun laws at all, and the states with strict gun laws, they have a lot of school shootings. And the states without strict gun laws, some of them have school shootings too. So clearly strict gun laws is not the thing that is going to solve this problem. What is going to solve this problem, and I, and I really do believe this, is look, I, I don't like this. I don't like to admit this. I don't like that this is a fact of life. But if you're, if you are a psycho and you want to make headlines, you realize that our schools are soft targets. And we have got to bolster security at our schools so that a person who walks through the front door We've got to bolster security so that if a psycho wants to walk through the front door and kill a bunch of children, they're not able to. And again, as a parent, do I want my kid's school to have additional security? No, of course I don't. I don't want my kids to go to school in a place where they feel like you've got to have additional security, but that is increasingly the reality that we live in. And a, and a bunch of my colleagues in the Senate, we actually worked on legislation that would give schools more resources to bolster their security because if these psychos are going to have to go after our kids, we've got to be prepared for it. We don't have to like the reality that we live in, but it is the, the reality that we live in and we've got to deal with it. Right. Next question. Hi, Senator Vance. Thank you for coming back to Arizona. My name is Christy Kelly, and I'm with the Arizona Sun-Times. We are your conservative newspaper, just about it here. Thank you. <laughs> I was speaking with an older woman. She was very sweet. She was gushing over you, gushing over your book. She was saying how great you were. And then she was like, but I heard he doesn't respect women. In Arizona, you're going to have to reach the independents that are believing the lies of mainstream media. So what would you say directly to independents that are buying into that? Well, I guess the first thing that I'd say is I was raised by strong women. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a strong grandmother. And thank you. And a strong mother who, despite her struggles, made sure every single day that I had what I needed and fought for me, even when sometimes she couldn't fought for herself, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be here. And there are a lot of kids in this country who wouldn't be here without strong women. So first of all, what I, what I think we got to say is that anybody who believes the lies of the media is this is a kid who loves strong women because he wouldn't be here without them, and he knows this country wouldn't be here without them. So we got to fight for them and make their lives easier. Now, look. The, there, 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 of course, are comments that I made sometimes even before I was running for Senate that were sarcastic 
where the mainstream media has repeated them instead of repeating the policy failures of the Kamala Harris campaign and the Kamala Harris presidency. And I just ask all independents, all Democrats, all Republican, whether you're a man or a woman or just whatever your, your political station, whatever your background is, what do you think is more important, a sarcastic comment that I made four years ago or the fact that Kamala Harris has opened the southern border, a sarcastic comment that I made four years ago or the fact that Kamala Harris has made it hard to, for, for strong women to send their kids to schools that actually teach them instead of indoctrinate them. I think that the reason I think that the reason the media and the Harris campaign are lying about me is because they can't tell the truth about their own record. And I happen to think that we ought to be led by somebody who believes in the American people enough to level with them, to tell them the truth, and to run on their record instead of on lies. And Kamala Harris ought to be ashamed of herself. And if you're an independent, a Democrat, or a Republican voter, I just ask you, look at the real record, look at the real context. And what you'd find, I think, is that Donald Trump and I are the only ticket for strong women and strong families in this country. Senator Vance, Tori Small with CBS News. Uh, Donald Trump last week announced that he wanted either private insurance companies or the federal government to cover the cost of IVF for families. How would a Trump Vance administration pay for that? Well, look, there are a lot of things that we could pay for in this country if we focused on American citizens instead of on illegal aliens, right? It's, this is not. I think it's so funny when the Democrats say, well, you're not going to be able to pay for that. Well, we're not going to be able to pay for anything if you keep on giving a half a trillion dollars to illegal aliens every single year instead of booting them out of this country and focusing on our own citizens. I mean, we have to think about this. Kamala Harris wants to give Medicare to illegal aliens, which would bankrupt that program and throw a generation of our elderly Americans into poverty. Think about all the housing benefits. Think about the fact that we are jailing thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens in this country right now. Think about the fact that municipal budgets have to pay for the health care costs and the schooling expenses of millions and millions of people who shouldn't be in this country in the first place. We have got the richest and most bountiful country in the world. What we need is a leadership that puts American citizens first instead of putting the interests of illegal aliens first. And if we do that, there's a whole lot we can do and do a lot better. So I, I want to be mindful of time. Let me take one more question, and then we're going to have to get out of here. Hi, Senator. Thank you for taking my question. Sure. Um, my question is, RFK Jr. is working right now to get his name off several ballots, including a lot of the battleground states. Um, could we see the Trump campaign join him in that effort, especially given how um, Kennedy and Trump have shared values, and do you think he dropped out too late, given everything that's happening right now? Well, look, I'm not going to make RFK's decisions for him. I'm glad that RFK is on the team, and I think it sends a great signal to Americans, and especially... I think it sends a great message, especially to Kennedy Democrats who feel left behind by the Democrat Party. You are welcome in Donald J. Trump's Republican Party, and RFK is, I think, leading the vanguard there. That's a great thing. But yeah, I mean, look, if, if RFK took more from Kamala Harris than from Donald Trump, do I think a lot of these Democratic officials would be rushing to get him off the ballot? Yes, I do. But we, look, we don't choose the deck of cards that we're playing with here. We can only control how we're actually playing the hand that was dealt. We're going to do everything that we can to persuade voters. We're going to do everything that we can to get RFK off the ballot in states where he wants to come off the ballot. And we're going to win this race regardless because the American people need better leadership. Donald J. Trump is going to give it to him. So... On that note, thanks to the reporters for the questions, but most of all, thank you all for being here. I want to make one request, one request of you, and it's, it's very simple. Look, we lost Arizona. 10,000 votes was the difference between Arizona going for Donald Trump and 10,000 going for Joe Biden. Yeah, there were a lot of problems. There were a lot of problems, but 10,000 votes stand between us 
and getting those, those Arizona electoral votes. And we had a lot of people just in this room today. And so I'm going to make a very special request, and that request is, is this. I want you to all get out there and vote ten times. <laughs> No, 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 no. I know you all are a little uncomfortable. To the media? Yeah, that, that will be the headline of the New York Times. J.D. Vance promotes voter fraud in Arizona. But I want us to vote ten times the legal way. And you know what that means? That means take yourself and take nine of your friends and family and get them to the polls by November the 5th. We had over 2,000 people at a church in Mesa last night. We've got a great crowd here today. If just the people in that crowd and this crowd get 10 people to the polls, we are going to win the state of Arizona. We're going to take back the White House, and we're going to give this country a president it deserves. God bless you all. Let's get Donald Trump over the finish line, and let's do it together. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Arizona. We're going to go red in November.